Hello, my name is James. I'm one of the developers and co-founders of CrowdRender. We're a company based in Australia and we make free render farm software. And this video is about the latest update to our add-on for Blender. It supports Blender 2.79 and Blender 2.8, which is new. And we're going to talk a little bit about how it works, uh, give you a quick demonstration, and also talk about the future. So let's dive right into looking at the new update we've just released. So obviously you need to download it from somewhere, and you can do that very easily from our website. All you have to do is head to our webpage, once you're there, you can use any of these download links to get to the download page. If you already have an account with us, it's pretty easy, just log in. And you can go to download section and then you'll find two new buttons, one for 2.79 and one for 2.8. They are different versions for the different versions of Blender, so make sure you download and use the right one. Also, you, if you don't have an account yet, it's totally free. Um, signing up, you just need an email and a password. So after you've downloaded the add-on as a zip file from our website, then you're going to need to install it. Now to do this, it's actually quite easy if you've never installed the add-on before. All you need to do is to open Blender, then go to your user preferences, go to add-ons, select install from file, and then use the file that you just downloaded from our website and then it will simply install. Now, if you have a previous version of CrowdVendor, you're gonna to have to remove the old one. Installing over the top doesn't seem to work, so we recommend just removing the previous version completely. Now, to do this on Linux and Apple is actually quite easy. You just go to your preferences, add-ons, find the CrowdVendor add-on, and then click remove, and then go through the same process as I just described for installing it, select install from file, and again, use the zip file you've just downloaded from our website. Now on Windows, there are two main problems you might find when you're trying to remove an add-on. Firstly, you might find that you get an error. And this error when you're trying to remove the add-on simply means that Windows is still trying to use one of the files in the add-on somewhere. We recommend to fix this basically shutting down Blender and opening it back up again, but with the add-on not enabled. There's more information on our website about how to do this. So I recommend if you're having trouble with this, head there or hit us up on email Secondly, another problem with Windows, and this can also happen on a fresh install, is that you may not have certain system DLLs present. To fix this, go to our website. Again, in the troubleshooting section, there's a simple Microsoft update, and all you have to do is download that update, and then it will install the correct files for you. Also, we don't support 32-bit versions of Windows. It will also error on you if you try installing CrowdRender onto a 32-bit version of Blender. So just remember, 64-bit only. So once the add-on successfully installed, you're going to need to enable it. Now it's up to you, if you want the add-on to launch with Blender, you can actually save your user preferences at this point in time. And that means every time you start Blender, the add-on will also start. If you don't want to do that, you can just leave this step out. Look for the crowd render panel. You should see a panel that looks like this. The next thing you're going to have to do is to start the add-on. Without this, you won't be able to actually use it. So you press the start button, and then you should see the system start up. You'll get some notifications at the bottom of the screen or at the top of the screen, depending on which version of Blender you have. And if you see that, then congratulations, you've successfully installed it, started it, and it's ready for use. So now you're gonna to wanna to add some computers and connect to them. So the way that CrowdRender works is you work from a computer which we generally call either the client or the master, and that's where you're going to connect from to the other computers, which we call render nodes, render slaves, or just servers. So that's pretty much the nomenclature out the way. So how do we do this? Essentially, you just go over to the CrowdRender panel and you click add a new node, and then you want to give it a name. Now we recommend using what we call the host name. If you're not sure what a host name is, then it's pretty easy to find it for your computer. You may have remembered setting up the computer name for the device that you're working from when you first started using it. On most operating systems, that's what the host name will be. Some of the exceptions to this may be Apple Mac, which has sometimes a host name which is either different or not set. But you can easily find out what it is, and you can also set it to something that's actually memorable or meaningful. Because remember, you want to be able to use the host name 
and put that into the crowd render panel as the node names that you're going to use. So once you've got a node ready and you've added the host name for it, you can click on the connect button. Now normally you should find that the connect button brings up a small window which will show you some numbers. These numbers are called the IP address. CrowdRender should be able to automatically find this IP address for you from your network. However, if it doesn't do that, you can actually find it manually. Again, this is fairly easy if you know where to look. It varies a little bit across the three different operating systems, but you can easily find out how to do it with a quick Google. So if it turns out that your IP address is blank for any of these nodes, you can easily type it in and then press OK. After you've pressed OK, CrowdRender is going to try and automatically connect to that other computer. You should see after a little while some status messages appear next to the node, and this just tells you that CrowdRender is connecting to it. The first a node gets connected to, CrowdRender then uploads the blend file to that computer. After it's uploaded, it then verifies that the data is the same on both computers. If it is, then you get synced. If it's not, then you get sync failed. Once it's synced, you can then use it to render. Check out our website for tips on what to do if you find that you've got a sync fail or if you do a render and you notice that one of the machines looks like it's not got the right data. So once you've got one or two or more computers that are in the synced state, you can now use them to render. And CrowdRender is gonna actually distribute each frame by sending parts of the frame to each of those computers, which will render them and then send them back. The way that you do this is first, you wanna probably select your engine. To do that, basically all you have to do is make sure that you've got the engine you want to use selected for the scene that you're currently viewing. You do that by going here and selecting whichever engine you feel like using, whether it's EV or Cycles, or if you're in 2.79, you might want to use Blender internal still. To render, you don't use F12 and you don't use the render menu. That's probably the one biggest difference with our render engine. You actually have to use the buttons that we've designed. I won't go into the reasons why, it just has to be this way, at least for the time being. So if you want to render a still, you just hit render still. So CrowdRender is now going to distribute that render over the computers we've got connected. Once it's finished, the results actually are recompiled into the normal render result, which you would see if you were just rendering without CrowdRender. That means you can use compositing. It also means you can use multiple scenes. So if you have a scene where you've got maybe, or if you have a file, sorry, where you've got one, two, three or more scenes, and you want to combine the results from each of those into a final image, uh, much like the classroom scene, uh, which is a benchmark you can get from the Blender website, by the way, then this is all handled automatically for you. Um, you can do animations as well as stills. Last thing I want to talk about is some of the other controls. Uh, some of these things may not make sense the first time you use them. So if you want to use GPUs, the best way to do that is to set firstly the device to GPU. Next, you want to actually go into the menus for each of your render nodes and select the actual GPU device, either CUDA or OpenCL. You can only select one or the other. If you leave it defaults to CPU and even though you have GPU selected up here, it will just still use your CPU. So that again, you go up here, you choose GPU and then you come down into the individual nodes and you select which of the cards that you want to enable. And then you go ahead and you render. So next we'll talk about the load balancer, which can not make sense sometimes. You may find the first time you render that it's actually causing your render to be slower than if you were just using one computer. And there's a good reason for this. Um, firstly, the design is old. Uh, we're trying to replace it. If you go to our crowdfunding campaign, which is on our website, you'll notice it's the first thing we're getting rid of uh, and designing a brand new one because we realize it's, it's pretty much not fit for purpose at this stage. But I'll tell you some of the quirks. So we actually devised a way that you can control this manually. This works particularly well for still single frame renders. So to do this, you open the load balancer menu, you choose which computers, sorry, you choose manual from this little checkbox here, and then you can actually adjust how much screen area each computer gets. And what these numbers mean is basically one is the entire screen area half 0.5 is half the screen area. So you can actually give different amounts of the entire screen area to different computers. 
Just be warned, this can have strange effects if you disable one of the render nodes, which you can do by clicking this camera icon, which means it no longer renders when you press render. This can cause not all of the frame to render properly. So if you find that not all of the frame is rendering, you may want to turn this off. Sorry, you may want to turn it back to automatic. Now automatic is actually best for animation renderers because we attempted to design something that would learn the strengths of the different machines that you have as the render happened. So as an animation render progresses, CrowdRender starts to learn how good the computers are and tries to optimize how much each computer gets. This works pretty well for animation renders, but it's actually quite terrible for single frame renders because sometimes it has no information to work from. And then you might find that the render is slow because it's given too much of the scene to a computer, which just is not very quick at all. But sometimes you want to use all your computers, including the slow ones, because why not? If you can make your render faster, you do it. So just be warned, if you find that you're not getting really, really good render performance, you may want to come in here and adjust it manually. So thanks so much for sticking around until the end of the video. If you thought we did something good, please give us a thumbs up. If you thought there was stuff we could improve, please tell us about it with a comment below. I'd also like to thank all of you who have been donating to our crowdfunding campaign over the last year. Thank you guys so much, that really helps. And good news, we've actually started writing code for the first beta version of CrowdRender. Now there will still be some patch updates to the current alpha version, which includes 017 which we've just released, but most of our time now goes into the very exciting task of creating a brand new beta version which is going to be really exciting. And lastly, I really encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll do lots more videos on our updates in the future, so you'd want to stay tuned for new releases and other stuff that we do. And finally, please consider sharing this video. It really helps if you put this on social media or send it to a friend, send it to a friend via email. All that little stuff really helps. And hopefully we'll see you again when we do the next update. Bye for now. Thank you.